Well, come along guys. Well, I've been lucky enough to get my grubby little mitts on a Triumph early again, thanks to the amazing people at Destination Triumph. Massive thanks to the guys at Washington for dropping this down to me especially. But never mind that. This is the brand new Triumph Tiger 900. This is the GT Pro version, which is the one which is fully loaded, all the bells and whistles. We've got a dry day. We're gonna go out and have a bit of fun on this machine now, but I can tell you, it's an absolute beauty. Let's go. So this is the new Tiger 900. When I say new, I mean absolutely new. Triumph have changed a lot of things on this bike. I mean, it's a whole new bike. Morning. We are out in the country now. Afternoon, even. <laughs> it's one o'clock. It's no longer morning. Triumph have been through this whole machine and refreshed it. I mean, it, it, there's been a lot of changes. First of all, of course, I guess the biggest change is the engine so the engine has increased in capacity it's now a 900 or an 888 if we're going to be absolutely correct about this so it's increased in capacity by 88 cc probably really because of the euro 5 and all those restrictions that affect the power delivery because even though this bike has increased by 88 cc the power output is exactly the same as the 800 version, as the old version. It makes 94 brake horsepower, but what has increased is the torque. The torque is up from 58 foot-pounds of torque to 64 foot-pounds of torque. They have also changed the firing interval of the crank. So basically, I could go into lots of technical detail that I don't understand very well, <laughs> but basically the firing interval on the crank has changed so it's not just the firing order but actually the position of where the pistons are on the crankshaft has changed it whereas the old 800 it was completely even so all the pistons off of the crank were completely evenly spaced now there's like three in the first hundred i'll put a picture on the screen three in the first 180 degrees of the crank and then nothing for the latter part of the crank rotation if that makes any sense the reason they've done that is not only to make the bike sound more sporty, it's to actually help it off-road. A big complaint with the old 800 when it was off-road is that triple engine was just too darn smooth. Absolutely smooth power. And when you're trying to get through difficult terrain, if it's too smooth, it just spins up. That's, that's why twins are so popular off-road, because they have like a, that pulse you get from a twin engine. And that helps them drive through loose surfaces so drive looked at various options of how to make their triple engine a, a bit more of a pulse to it to pull it through various terrains and what they came up with was this cross plane t crank should i say not cross plane the t crank design and you can really feel it I, i've ridden the 790 adventure quite extensively and it's quite reminiscent now of that engine the feel from it this still has that undeniable triple wine oh that's the horn horn works but it's just got that little bit of a, a pulse to it it's not so smooth anymore what that could of course mean is it's introduced some vibration to the bike by having that uneven firing interval it's actually made the, the actual feel of the bike a bit less smooth and a little bit more vibey a little bit more twin like so not only has it got some of the character and the posters of the twin engine it's also picked up a few of the vibes from a twin as well and you, I mean I'm doing 60 and I can feel a little bit on my hands but it's absolutely nothing it's absolutely nothing it's certainly not enough to put anyone off this bike that it's got these slight little vibes through the handlebars now it's it's still absolutely fine anyone who tells you it's now too vibey is talking bollocks other work to the engine, the engine is actually two and a half kilos lighter than the 800 version. They've made the sump slimmer, it's got less oil in the engine and they've actually made the sump, you know, they've, they've doesn't drop down as much if you like. So that's enabled them to actually drop the engine, oh super juke, 
enabled them to drop the engine down by 25 mil in the frame to reduce the center of gravity so it's just got a lower center of gravity now the engine's also been cantered forward slightly as well so the, the whole frame is new to accommodate those engine changes the suspension's changed, the chassis's changed, the styling's changed, the equipment levels have changed. The whole thing, I don't think there's anything which is the same as the old bike. The old versions of the Tiger were quite confusing, like the XCA. I, I didn't really understand what model was what by the naming of them. They've tried to simplify it now. So there's still a fair few different versions of this bike, but they're a bit more obvious. So there's the base Tiger 900, which is the absolute base model. That starts at £9,500. An unbelievable price, £9,500. Then you've got the GT version, which adds things like, you know, some rider modes, a 7-inch TFT screen, and some other bits and bobs go onto the GT, the, the cruise control, the heated grips, things like that. And then you have the GT Pro, which is still the road-focused version, but then they add things like the quick shifter and the blipper, uh, uh, the lead electronic rear shock, so you can adjust it for preload as well as dampening and rebound. Also rider and passenger heated seats. As you can see, the, the GT Pro, this version, is fully kitted. It's got everything on. The only thing it doesn't have is keyless ignition. But, <laughs> but that's no bad thing, because who likes that anyway? Let's get past this joker. Also, incredibly, the brakes on this have also been overhauled. And this has got the Brembo Stylemas on it with 320mm Brembo discs. So even the base bike at nine and a half grand has got top of the range Brembo Stylema braking. To ride the bike, I mean, I've just jumped on this. And when you first get on it, it's actually not a particularly sporty riding position. It's not as sporty as the GS1200. Your feet are a bit further forward, your knees are sort of at a 90 degree angle. It's very reminiscent actually of the Suzuki V-Strom. The Suzuki V-Strom 1000, that's what it reminds me of, the position of it, which is nothing wrong with that, it's just not quite as sporty as some of the other adventure bikes, like the 1290 Adventure, that's a bit more sporty. Even the 790 Adventures have got a slightly more sporty riding position. This one is definitely about comfort. It's a very comfortable position. And it's the same with the front end. The front end feels like it's quite a long way away from you and it's, it's got quite a long wheelbase and you're sat back a little bit. I mean, it's, it's definitely a bike you want to use the rear brake to sort of set yourself up for corners. You know, it, it's not a sporty feel as some of the other bikes, some of the other adventure bikes. But horses for courses, I think this is a more comfortable position. I'm six foot two, 18 stone. I feel very comfortable on this bike. The bars are very wide. The seat is actually quite low. It has an 810 millimeter seat. So the seat is lower than the 790 Adventure. And they also do a low seat version of this bike, which isn't just that the seat's got some padding, less padding in it. It's actually a different subframe and stuff as well. And on the low seat version, I think it's 50 millimeters lower than, th than this version, which is already only 810, so it's not a massively tall bike. So again, try for catering for the slightly shorter rider, the vertically challenged. When I open it up, I can very much feel that, that pulsing. As I say, very reminiscent of the 790 Adventure. Bit of water. Woo! It has lost a little bit of that smoothness. I mean, I have taken the Tiger 800 off-road before. I've done the Triumph Adventure experience, and I've done, I've done a little bit of off-road on the 800 in the past. And uh, it's, it's a very accomplished off-road bike. This one should be even better, because the bike is actually about five kilos lighter than the older model. As I mentioned, there's two and a half kilos saved on the engine alone. There's another five kilos in the bike. It's, it starts at 194 kilos, whereas the old model was 200 kilos. This GT version is a little bit heavier because you've got things like the centre stand, the heated seat, you know, that all adds extra weight. And I think this one is 196 kilos with all those extras. The blipper and quick shifter are incredibly good. 
incredibly smooth at any, any sort of revs they seem to be amazing at. Like I say, they're standard on the Pro version, they're not on the standard GT, so they're standard on the Pro and they are very good. What I do like about the Tiger is they give you two versions of the bike. So you've got the road focus versions, which have the 19 inch front wheel, which, which makes the bike handle so much better on the road. And then they have the rally versions, which have the 21 inch spoked wheels, which of course they're more for going off road. They're not making really much pretensions at this version. You could do the odd gravel lane on it and stuff. It's got an off-road mode to select, but they're not trying, you know, they're not selling it as an off-road bike, which I like because who really takes their adventure bikes off-road? There's not many people. There's not many take their expensive adventure bikes off-road. So why give them a 21-inch front wheel as standard when that compromises the handling? I'd much rather prefer to have the 19 inch and have a separate range of bikes with the 21 on or have the 21 as an option. Front brake is very good but with this style you do most of your braking on the rear so those Stylema front end is almost a little bit wasted on this I feel because it's definitely a rear breaker for setting out for the corners. This also has different suspension for this year. Gone is the WP suspension. And in with Marzocchi forks and rear shock. I don't know if that is a cost cutting exercise, but it's a change to Marzocchi, which is uh, unusual, I think. The rear shock, the electronic rear shock on the Pro version is adjustable for preload in four different modes. You can select whether you've got luggage, whether you've got a pillion, you know, it's, it's that sort of setup where you select what you've got. Very similar to the, the 900, the F900 I rode the other week. So I've done the same thing, I've got it set for a rider with some luggage <laughs> because of my extra bit of luggage around the middle. When we do the walk around, I'll go through the screen a little bit, a little bit of detail on the screen. This is the latest Triumph TFT and it has this rather strange rev counter arrangement that I'm really not sure about. It's the same as what's on the new Street Triple and I must say I, I don't like that layout. It's not clear to see what the rev counter is doing. So it, I know there's, there is some different styles you can choose but they're all based on that rather strange rev counter layout which I'm not a massive fan of. But apart from that it's a very very nice dashboard. Not as nice as the BMW one I fancy. I think I prefer the look and the feel of the BMW one a little bit over the Triumph. Let me see. Also got uh, <coughs> cornering ABS <laughs> which does come in handy. Stylema calipers in action there. Oh yes sir. I haven't got the heated grips on. Are you mad? Get those heated grips on. The grips have three different levels of heat. The seat also has three different levels of seat, and I'm pleased to say the seat has its own button on the switch gear, so you haven't got to go fighting through the menus. Actually, I've got the rear passenger seat on as well. There's a little switch on the back here. I'll show you the walk around so the, so the passenger can, can has their own control <laughs> over the rear seat. I can't find it. I'll turn it off when I stop. But my, my invisible man on the back is also having a... That's got a nice warm bottom. The tag size has also increased now to 20 litres. It was 18 before, it's an extra two litres of fuel, but the bike isn't as efficient as the 800. It does 55 miles per gallon, whereas the 800 did 60. So probably those extra two litres are eaten up by the additional fuel consumption. The engine does make the same power as the 800, but it delivers it, I think it's 750 revs lower in the rev range and the torque figure is up 10% or so but not only is it just at the peak it's, it's stronger everywhere it's 10% up the whole rev range with the torque so yeah you, it's not massive the extra power you've got I mean it's only 88 cc at the end of the day but I think it's the firing order which has really made the most difference to the, the actual torque delivery and feel of the bike really Lipper is silky smooth like butter absolutely like butter the clutch is also very light 
It is just a cable clutch, I think. Yeah, it's a cable clutch. But Triumph have done some fancy stuff with the clutch basket. You know, it's got like the, uh, well, am I using the clutch? Just I'm talking about it. I should be on the quick shifter. But it's got some fancy slipper assisted clutch, which actually makes it lighter at the lever. And that is very light. I'd imagine off road is when you really want that light lever. And that would be perfect for feathering on those muddy lanes. It's got plenty of go. You don't really need any more. It's only when you're up to sort of over 70 and you give it a handful that the speed increases a little bit slower. But there's enough there. There really is enough there. On the fast corners, it's all right actually at the, at the higher speed bends. It's quite stable. Now I've put the bit of luggage on the rear suspension. It's actually firm enough to be sporty. This is in the sporty engine map. A couple of gears down on the blipper. Anchor it in. It's nice, you can have fun. You can certainly enjoy the twisties on it. It doesn't actually suffer too much. I'll just give it a bit of front brake there. It doesn't suffer too much with too much dive on the front considering that the, the, the forks are non-adjustable for preload and you've got three 20 millimeter stylema calipers hauling you up there's not a huge amount of fork dive so you're not jumping pogo sticking back and forth for an adventure bike that is actually pretty good and i think that's the advantage with having a bike which is designed as a road bike foremost all the suspension travel and everything is set up for going really on the road. You've not got those compromises of the big 21 inch front wheel and extra travel suspension to deal with going off road when you're not actually going to be. Right, let's just stop at the pub and do a quick walk around of the bike. There's a lot to show you on this one, so it could take a little while. Where are we stopping today? The Cricketers. The Cricketers at Duncton. Right, let's do. Let's do the walk around here. So there it is, the new Tiger 900. This is, uh, as I say, the GT Pro, which comes in this burgundy, <laughs> red burgundy colour. I'm not overly convinced of the colours of these bikes, I have to say. But there we go. Front brakes, as I mentioned, by Brembo, and also the cast 19-inch front wheel. Uh, again, the wheels are lighter than the old version of the Tiger. The important things is that the new engine two and a half kilos lighter than the old version they've done that by changing the way the actual cylinder barrels uh, are produced there's their way they're casted together there's some clever weight saving being achieved there and also the sump isn't as deep so the sump is shallower than the old version the bike actually holds less oil than the old version which has enabled them to move the mount the whole engine slightly lower in the frame marzocchi front forks rebound being in the right hand fork leg and compression being in the left the important stuff for the winter heated seat uh, let me just turn off the rear seat the rear seat switches here so your passenger can have full control over their bottom temperature the marzocchi rear shock the electronic marzocchi rear shock tucked in there Another big change on this is the headlight styling and design. The full LED headlights. I actually really like the slimmer style clocks with the DRL running lights on the inside. The GT Pro also comes with the fog lights, which is a nice little touch as well. They've also gone a bit Japanese, whereby the low beam is on the left and the high beam is on the right, so you don't have both those lights on together. So I'm not I'm not sure about that. I don't like when they have when they have odd headlights like that. Switch gear is the same as on the speed triple I rode the other week. It's all illuminated, which is a nice touch. And obviously lovely integrated heated buttons, cruise control at the top, but all illuminated, which is very nice. Good afternoon. You navigate by the little toggle on, on the switch gear. A, a rider with pillion and luggage, just a rider with luggage a rider and a pillion or just a pillion on its own so i'm going to go 
rider with luggage. You can also then adjust the the sportiness. So I guess you're adjusting the compression and the rebound on the shock as well. Now I had it whacked all the way up to fully sporty and it still felt a little bit on the soft side. Like I said, I think this whole bike really is, is more about comfort. I've also integrated this with my phone. The GT Pro has the, the Bluetooth phone with the, with, the, with, the one, with the navigation built into it as well. So you've got all that with the Pro. It'd be a 1700 quid. Oh, there's my contacts here. Sarah, conference number. Look at this, H2 Tracker. There you go, so it's integrated with my phone so I can call people from here. I can call my H2 Tracker. <laughs> uh, what else we got worth showing you? You got the range still empty, 168 miles still empty, 50 miles per gallon, service due. It's, it's not had its first service yet. The different styles of the dash. These are the different styles, so they're all really sort of based on similar themes. Another change worth pointing out is they split the radiator. So you've got two separate radiators either side now and just one big radiator. The reason being, all the crap you get flung up from the tyre no longer just sits in the radiator in the middle. And if you're off-road, of course, you, you risk damaging your radiator. So they've split it and got a little sort of space in between. So all of that crud which comes off of the tyre doesn't just go immediately into your radiator. So they decided to put the rectifier there instead. <laughs> Under the seat, you've got a little compartment to keep your phone in, which looks like it has a, has a charger as well. It's quite a nice little touch. So you can keep your phone safe, but you're not gonna get much else under there. You're not gonna get your sandwiches in. But I think that is about it. So let's jump back on. I must admit, I'm quite enjoying the heated seat. I've got lovely warm buttocks. Lovely, got toasty hands. Warm buttocks. <laughs> what more could you ask for? Everywhere is flooded. Look at the flood. Look at the flooding here. Sorry, just have to interrupt you. That is a field, not a lake. <laughs> that is a field. The amount of rain we've had is just incredible. Now I've got the 360 camera up high. You'll probably be able to have a good look in here. But look, look, this is the river. This is the river. Look at it. Completely bursting. It's like a torrential stream. You could go white, wa white water rafting down there. Oh, it's so so much rain we've had, and I bet come the summer they'll be moaning there's a water shortage. <laughs> I hope we bloody better get a decent dry summer with all this rain we've had. Oh, let's sneak through here. Lovely. Yeah, it's very controllable, very easy to ride. Clutch is very light when you want to use it, when you don't want to use the quick shifter. And it just the throttle response is beautiful in town. It, it's, it's very easy, very easy to ride. A really comfortable bike. And I've been riding this now for a couple of hours. I'm in no discomfort whatsoever. Lots of padding on the seat. The riding position is comfortable. Afternoon. She's a lovely machine. Windblast is actually fantastic. There's not many bikes, adventure bikes, that you ride with a peak visor without having some sort of vibration of the helmet. <laughs> I'm talking bad vibrations of the helmet. I don't know if because that screen's lower and, my, and the helmet is just in the wind anyway, but I'm finding it absolutely fine. If I drop that down, yeah, there's definitely more wind now and it's, it's catching the helmet a little bit. So let's go back up again. Yeah, in that higher position for me, 6'2", that's actually fine to the motorway. The wind is about here, so just literally just above the peak of my helmet. Cruising from the engine is doing just a tad over 4,000 revs. I could just about make that out on that display in this mode. But just over 4,000 revs at 70 miles an hour. Well, there we go, guys. That is about it, really. That's the first little look at the new Tiger 900. I'm impressed with it. It's lovely. I think the changes they've made to the engine with the, the crank changes, I think it has given it a bit more character. <laughs> I know some people will complain adding vibrations to a bike 
does not add character. You, 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 it's, a, it's a negative thing. It's not a positive thing. It depends how you want to use the bike. I think Triumph wanted to make this more of a, an off a serious off-road machine. And it was pretty serious. Now it's even more serious. And it also has added, it has added character. I don't mind a few little vibes. I like twins. You don't want those vibes to be excessive and they're certainly not excessive. But the bike is great. The changes they've made, the updates they've done to this bike are all positive. I don't think there's anything negative I could say about this bike considering the changes they've done. There is a launch for this bike on the 21st of March at Destination Triumph. I'm going to be going to the Washington branch. So if you want to come down, say hello, see this bike, go for a test ride. I'm going to be there from 12 till 3, the 21st of March at Destination Triumph at the Washington branch, which is near Worthing, Arundel, sort of way out in the countryside. Have a look at Destination Triumph's website. You can see exactly where it is, but I'll be there from between 12 and 3 o'clock. Come along, say hi, and I'll see you there. Take care, guys. Ride safe. Enjoy the spring, which is around the corner, I'm sure it is. And I'll speak to you next time. See you later. This is power level one, which is full power. <laughs> Done here. <laughs> I told you I was scared about that. Whoa! I've never dropped a bike before in my life. Whoa! <laughs> that's it. That's it. <laughs> Listen to me. Never mind getting beat up. Give me this any day of the week. <laughs> oh, shit.